I tend to look at this work from the perspective of school change. How can we make school change happen? Uh, my work in Auburn was around the kinds of practices that we could make change in classrooms, and now my work at the state is how can we make change happen. And uh, this project has just provided a, a wealth of things to reflect on in terms of how you make things actually happen in school. I think we really misunderstand how you make change happen in schools. And uh, uh, so the first thing I'm noticing is how the partnerships between practitioners and researchers happen. I've done a little on both sides, and I know uh, it was pointed out there's a big cultural difference in general between um, practitioners who have this wealth of kind of craft knowledge and researchers which have this wealth of, let's call it academic knowledge. And so many times things happen like we contact a researcher and we say, um, we want some data on something that we're interested in that may or may not match a researcher's interest. Or a researcher comes to us and asks to study something that we may not be doing. And uh, how this relationship started from an entirely different place, where we decided we would collaborate and we would work together. And so my first observation is, I believe you make change happen not when people come with tasks and solutions, but when they come to build relationships and have conversations. It's through the relationships and the conversations that started to move us forward and find common ground and help shifted our, our roles, but allowed us to bring our own personal strengths to that work. The second piece uh, that we talked about is how we saw this wonderful shift in practice in mathematics. Uh, I think uh, uh, we came from a kind of a traditional area, uh, well-intentioned, uh, let's have kids practice their math facts, let's help make them be good mathematicians, but without a deep understanding of the math practices or what mathematical thinking is or what that looks like in young learners. And uh, I, frankly, that's not how we grew up in school, and that's not the way many of us were trained. Uh, and this work uh, got us from the point of uh, using some uh, pretty high quality uh, apps to build foundational knowledge, to using these tool apps to help us explore mathematics and mathematical thinking. The interesting thing about that work is, I think when we think about school change, we look for neat solutions. We look for neat and clean, and we are afraid of messy. And yet, I would say it was only the messiness that got us to that shift. It was the conversations, it was the brainstorming, it was trying things out, it was having it work, not work at first, and think about how to make it better. Um, so if we want to make change happen, we need to be comfortable with messy. Um, and, and work through that. And uh, we need to be highly suspicious of clean and uh, uh, pristine. My next observation is, as we think about school change, I don't think school change happens because of any lack of information. And yet, the approach we often take is an informational approach. How much information can we give you? And if you just had, Catherine, if you just had the right information, you would make that change. Uh, the mistake we make is not understanding that it's really about buy-in. And because we worked on relationships and conversations, the work our teachers focused on were their own questions, their own wonderings. To some degree, I think we've been so wrapped up in kind of a traditional approach to teaching, they may not have even been aware they had questions. I don't mean that as a criticism, but think about it systemically. How often do we get wrapped up in our own work and you get wrapped up in doing what you've done? This gave us an opportunity to stop and say, well, what's not working? Well, why don't we think that's working? And, uh, and so by the messy process, we got to the point where the questions were our own and uh, once they were our own, we owned it. Now a piece of that then, we could collaborate with the researchers and the researchers helped our practitioners understand how to do kind of an iterative no, um, a model of, uh, we are so used, practitioners are so used to thinking of data as scores and our researchers helped us just simply think in terms of evidence. What would be the indicators and the evidence? And so we got into this nice iterative cycle of reflection and looking for evidence 
and it, it became data that teachers felt was authentic and useful and meaningful. And the last piece I want to point out is that in Auburn, we've been doing a lot of school change work, including around proficiency-based learning. And that led us to thinking deeply about uh, proficiency-based professional learning. And I'm hoping I'm going to, there we go, good. So when we thought about proficiency-based um, professional learning, again, we think we misunderstand professional learning to think of it just in terms of workshops, that if you attend the workshop, you're done. But in fact, it's not attendance at workshops we want, it's change of classroom practice. And clearly workshops are a critical piece of that. And so as we thought about, well, what are the components that we need to think about for professional learning from a proficiency-based model? We think about three broad categories, uh, clarity and transparency, helping teachers build um, foundational knowledge with those skills and knowledges, and helping them so, uh, uh, provide support for them getting to proficiency. And so things like having a professional learning curriculum uh, and having some sort of a system to keep track of where they are in their professional learning and helping them answer the question, but what does it look like? The support for foundational knowledge includes those workshops, but also things like reusable learning objects, videos, websites, other kinds of resources, so the professional learning can be on their own. But we also have to recognize that um, professional learning includes those steps we take to help teachers get good at that new knowledge. So how do we support them inventing lessons and trying it out and reflecting on it? How do we support them with coaching and feedback, whether it's peer coaching or something more formal? And then how do we provide them face-to-face -face time to share their, their um, strategies, their successes, their challenges? So this is where our thinking happened to go based on our proficiency-based work. In pre preparing for this presentation, and as we had conversations and reflected on the math collaboratory and that work, I had kind of a V8 moment where I said, wait a minute, we're doing this. We did not design the math collaboratory to fit this model. But in reflecting on the math collaboratory, we realized that organically it did. That, that um, uh, uh, EDC had provided us with lots of uh, information about uh, teaching and learning of mathematics. That was our professional learning curriculum. They provided us these videos of these practices in action in classrooms like ours. That was the answering the question, but what does it look like? And we had how-to sessions. Those are our same page sessions and lots of online resources. But this whole process organically supported go try things in the classroom and reflect on it. And a lot of our meeting time was coming back and sharing what was working and what wasn't working. And uh, the um, higher ed folks and the EDC folks got out into classrooms and the administrators got out into classrooms. And so what we discovered was that we had kind of organically had the opportunity to live this model and that we may be able to now reflect on this and be more intentional as, who, as we develop some of our other professional learning. So not only has this kind of been really successful for us in terms of, of seeing the needle move in terms of classroom practice, but it's given us an opportunity to reflect on what are some of those critical pieces that need to be in place if you want to change teacher practice and, and uh, how that may be different than some of our traditional assumptions about how you make change happen in schools.